What is this game? Hey everyone, as always, Jarek here, and welcome to 2020's Hunt Down the Freeman. I should immediately state that I have not looked at anyone else's reviews. I didn't want anyone else's bias coming in. I didn't know how bad this game would really be. All I saw was that it was overwhelmingly negative on Steam. And my mindset was genuinely, well, how bad can it be? I was not prepared. So, yeah, if I repeat anything someone else has said, it's because this game is so god-awful that everyone has had the same experience. So in this video, we're going to be answering the question, how bad is the 13 remake really? I'm not going to leave you in the dark, it's really bad. But first, I need to thank today's sponsor. Well, past me does. Thanks, future me. Today's sponsor is Surfshark VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It encrypts all your data so people can't find your browsing history, IP address, or your current location. If you're watching this channel, it's safe to assume that you play video games, and this is incredibly important if you also happen to be a streamer. DDoSing and swatting are things that do happen. You may not know whether or not a VPN has actually stopped you from being swatted or not, but that's something I would rather not find out. So first and foremost, the most important thing about a VPN is your security. It stops people you don't want getting your personal information from getting your personal information. It doesn't matter if it's undesirable individuals, the government, companies, you're protected. But hey, if you're a gamer, you get extra benefits than just your protection. Say if you're currently traveling abroad in Australia, but you still want to connect to servers over in the US to play with your buds, well, you can do that with a VPN. Say if you live in the UK, which has generally higher prices on games, you can connect to a server elsewhere and get cheaper prices. For that matter, you can bypass censorship entirely. Say you want to watch a YouTube video blocked in your country, well, just change server location and you can now watch the video. And best of all, you can use Surfshark on an unlimited amount of devices. No restrictions. If you want to try Surfshark for yourself, go to surfshark.deals and use promo code Jarek to get 84% off and four extra months free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is no risk to try it out yourself. Check the links down below in the video information and the pinned comment. Again, huge thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Before I can even get started about how bad this game is, I need to mention that Microids and Playmagic have made a statement on this game's release. Three days after launch. Microids is the publisher, they are based in France, and Playmagic is the studio based in Ukraine. As far as I can tell, Playmagic has only ever released one other game, and that was a mobile Rambo game. So, yeah, already not really the best studio to go to when you're remaking a game that's a cold classic. I don't want to read this whole statement, but I do want to focus on a few things. Most specifically, this line here. The pandemic has impacted the game's production on many levels. Pivoting to homeworking for the teams has added unexpected delays in the development schedule and QA process. We hoped we would be able to provide a day one patch fixing all issues, but the development of this update is taking more time than expected. Then why release the game? You knew it was broken and you pushed it out anyway. This basically translates into we needed the holiday sales and we'll fix it later. It's not selling very well, so we have to apologize. I also really hate them putting the blame on the pandemic. Everyone has to deal with it. Yeah, 2020 sucks and I'm not happy with it either. In fact, I wish people would be taking the pandemic more seriously. Wear your f***ing mask. However, every studio has to deal with this pandemic equally. And they all pushed their games back because they knew they weren't going to be able to release it on time. Halo Infinite. Far Cry 6, Cyberpunk, that list can go on for a long time. So why this studio thinks the pandemic is a good excuse to just shit out what they did is kind of inexcusable. I also really hate their statement on QA testing because there's a few ways you can take that. Either A, they're throwing their QA testers under the bus, which is unfair, or B, there just wasn't any QA testing. Honestly, either one of these things can be true, but there's no way in the world they had QA testing and didn't know it was as broken as it was. They even mentioned a day one patch, hoping it would fix the problem, so they knew. I mean, hell, if I'm seeing this within the first five minutes, yeah, everyone's gonna know. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's actually talk about the game. Here is where I would usually talk about the story, but I can't really do that here, as this remake manages to mess that up too. There were many times where I was suddenly dumped from one level to the next, missing a cutscene altogether, having no context as to what the hell just happened. Take your floating stack of papers, thank you. I guess that was the level!
I don't. I have no idea how we got here. I feel like it's missing cutscenes. There were times where cutscenes were literally silent and had no audio. There's no audio. That's not the stream messing up. There's actually just no audio. So I don't really want to talk about the story here. I may talk about it if I make a future video on the original 13. You can still buy that for like six bucks on Steam and it works perfectly fine on PC. If you want the 13 experience, buy the original game. Do not buy this remake. So from here, let's move on to the graphics. And this was something people were concerned about before the game even came out. It just doesn't look like the original 13. Now, admittingly, it's been a long time since I played the original 13, so my memory is a little bit fuzzy, but there are a few things I remember very clearly about this game. The first one is that the stealth sections were complete I hated anything that instantly failed me because someone saw me. For the record, a lot of people ask me to play stealth games. I do not like stealth games and find them to be horribly unfun, so I am not the person fit for that. But more importantly, what I really remembered about the original game was just the amazing art style. It wasn't comic book influenced, it just made you feel like you were in the comic book page itself. For example, when a big explosion happened near you, it would shake this border around the edges of the screen. When you hit someone over the head of the chair, the whole thing would flash white. And the cutscenes were oddly satisfying. They just oozed with style. Yet this remake doesn't have any of this. It totally is lacking the comic book style from the original. This just looks like a standard cell shaded game. And the few times they tried to actually add in that sort of comic book style, it didn't work very well. But the thing I noticed right away about the graphics is that this game takes a lot out of your computer. As I was streaming, I found that it was maxing out my GPU and making my stream lag. And it wasn't a memory leak either. The game wouldn't eventually crash or just keep slowing down further and further. It was very specific parts of levels that were unoptimized. But I didn't even get into the game before I noticed this. When I got to the main menu, I noticed this game was eating about 50% of my GPU. I realized this is because it wasn't capping my frame rate, so it was running at like 3 thousand FPS. So I capped my frame rate, nothing changed, restarted the game, and then the game was actually running at 60 FPS and it was still eating about 20% of my GPU, but whatever. I have some important things to point out about this. The first one is that when I play games like Doom Eternal or Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, it only uses about 40-50% of my GPU. The second and more important thing to point out I have a 3080. Are you telling me this game maxes out a 3080? More important specs about my PC. AMD 3700X, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at 3600 MHz, a 3080, 2 terabyte NVMe drive. No way in hell should this game be maxing out my GPU, especially since it was only using about 25% of my VRAM. This is one of the worst optimized games I've ever seen, and I'm willing to bet they never ran it on a 3080 before it launched. And out of curiosity, I decided to change all the settings. I put them to the lowest settings possible, no difference. Frame rate was still all over the place, and it was still eating up my GPU. Oh, and yes, there's no FOV slider. What a pile of shit. But that's not all, there's way more technical problems than that. As far as gameplay goes, the very first thing I noticed was the abysmal aiming. There is some hard mouse acceleration in this game that makes aiming consistently damn near impossible. But even worse than that, there is no way to change your ADS sensitivity, and by default the ADS sensitivity feels about 30% of your regular aim sensitivity. Why? It is impossible to aim with a keyboard and mouse this way. To make it even better, the sensitivity options are shared between a mouse and a controller. I realized this when my controller kept vibrating on my computer until I unplugged it. Didn't change how my aim felt in any way whatsoever, but at least it wasn't vibrating on my computer anymore. In fact, when I picked up the controller to momentarily test it, it felt a lot more natural. So it's pretty obvious what's going on here. A mouse is basically just emulating what a controller is supposed to do, which explains the mouse acceleration. This is the laziest way to implement keyboard and mouse support. Oh, but the technical bugs just keep on going. The audio is a mess in this game. So often, the soundscape will just stop. There will be no audio in the background at all, leaving you to wander in complete silence. Literally no audio. Literally nothing. <laughs> and my frame rate is... That's what you're going to be hearing most of the game. But in other times, suddenly things are loud as all hell for no reason. <laughs> and now... Wow. Listen to all this rain that 100% exists. 
What is with the audio in this game? Yep, in a place with absolutely no rain, it's louder than it has any reason to be. Also, I should point out that it's not snowing anymore, so the snow levels look a lot worse, and there's no wind sound effects either. The mixing truly is all over the place. One guard will sound like he's right next to you when he's about 100 feet away, for seemingly no reason. But the best audio experience I had in this game was right towards the end, during a very, very riveting boss. Wait, can I? I can just stun him by putting him in the gas. I started getting a Rambo 6 Vegas style machine gun glitch, where a machine gun's audio would just loop over and over and over endlessly. It persisted until the next cutscene then stopped. Who is shooting? It got louder! Okay, okay. I can hear. <laughs> God. And then it carried over to the next level and continued. Adam Wesley is, was the original voice actor, a uh, slot in the original game. These are all just the dialogue from the original game. It's still going! What the f I still hear it. It's very faint, but I still hear it in the distance. Wow. See, do you hear it? Then I beat the game, and it persisted to the main menu! Alright. Okay. There's no audio, by the way. I can still hear the machine gun! Oh, thank god I can skip that. It's in the main menu! That's pure talent. You somehow made the Rainbow Six Vegas Terror Stunt machine gun glitch worse. I almost want to applaud you. Next, we have to talk about the cutscenes. As I mentioned, in the original game, these were highly stylized, and they were fantastic to look at. But the remake somehow has some of the worst cutscenes I have ever seen in a full production game. Now we're in a desert? This legitimately looks like an SFM! Or how about this cutscene? This could be another one of that blind Bro, this looks like I Fortnite. Uh-huh. <laughs> you save a life and she splits. Jealous, Major? Just get in the damn boat. This is like the lowest quality. Like, what is the quality of this cutscene? This looks hideous! It looks like CGI from an early 2000s Hot Wheels game. Christ, all this and I haven't even gotten to the gameplay yet. I said press Q to use it, but. Oh my god. What the f What happened? What's going on? <laughs> First of all, where did this person come from? Secondly, what happened to them? Uh... It looks like something out of the thing. But look at this water, like, what the heck? Jesus Christ. Nothing you can do. <laughs> that was so bad. Mama, I feel my frame rate taking. Where did the other magazine come from? What's with the oh, hold on. First of all, where does the other magazine come from? It just materializes? Secondly, audio what? <laughs> then I would rather just play the earlier Quake games. <laughs> Why was she a man suddenly? What the? What is going on with her legs? <laughs> oh 
Look at her face! What? Where did that guy come from? I... What the... Uh, Alright, hold on. I gotta get a look at this guy. What the f*** is going on to the- What's happening with his face?! Oh my god! My. Oh, I destroyed him too hard. Oh! <laughs> huh? Don't lose him! Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's shit too. This was the best way I figured I could show you how bad the gameplay in this game is. To just show you. Explaining it isn't enough, the game just insults itself. But the one thing I really, really wanted to talk about was how truly awful the AI was. You could be standing 50 feet away from them and they don't see you. You can shoot a guard with an unsuppressed weapon and without fail the other guards will all walk to his dead body so you can shoot them too. They take about 5 years to actually get to the alarm to turn it on. A lot of times you'll see them just staring at a wall, even when you're standing right next to them. I am honestly struggling to think of a game that has worse AI than this. Even Aliens Colonial Marines is better. It looks great in comparison. And the bosses are so bad, they're somehow worse than the bosses in Soldier of Fortune Payback. The game is so buggy, I got softlocked five different times. Yes, I was counting. For example, in this level where I had to escort the general, I couldn't see him at first, so I just kept going. There was an RPG guy on the ridge, I killed him, went up to the helicopter, but the general wasn't following me. So I walked back down, I found him, he said some dialogue, and I continued. Well, at one point he told me to kill the RPG guys that I had already killed, and he wouldn't move forward until I did. But they were already dead. So I had to restart from checkpoint. On another level, you kill a boss. The boss drops a key, you pick up that key, you use the key to open a hatch. This leads you to another key that you can grab to open up a door that is your escape. Problem was, that hatch was already open. So by going out of order and picking up the second key, it wouldn't let me continue, even if I used the key on the hatch now. Which wouldn't do anything, but you can still do it. This is how buggy this game is. Simple problems like this softlock the game. Then we get to the multiplayer, which is one of the things I do remember very fondly. In the original 13, there was this game mode called The Hunt. I believe this was a PlayStation 2 exclusive mode, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, the point of this mode was to shoot down this character called the Reaper. Every time you did damage to him, he got smaller and ran faster. If he touches you, you just die. Really simple in concept, but I had a lot of fun playing this with my brother. Well, the multiplayer in this remake is A, local only, no online play at all, B, doesn't even work, and C, the only modes are team deathmatch and deathmatch. Like, why did you even try? I think by now you get the point. This is one of the worst games I have ever played on this channel. Maybe number two all time behind Hunt Down the Freeman. And it's giving Hunt Down the Freeman a run for its money. Speaking of money, this thing is 40 bucks. I'm not you. Again, don't buy this remake. Go buy the original 13. And that's the most confusing thing about all of this. Who was asking for a remake to begin with? 13 was a cult classic. It was a game that a small select group of people really liked, but most people probably have never heard of. And it's pretty old at this point. But even the people that really liked 13 weren't asking for a remake. I really want to know the higher up that greenlit this. 13 isn't a game that's aged poorly, the art style still looks good today. You could have simply remastered 13, made it work at 69 aspect ratio and re-release it for $20 and people would have been happy. I would have bought it. And maybe if that sold well, make an actual sequel. The original had a terrible cliffhanger ending. So I don't know man, this whole thing is just weird. I don't know why it exists, it shouldn't exist with how bad it is, just go play the original 13. I think that is where I'll end this video. Again, a huge thanks goes to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you want to try Surfshark for yourself, go to surfshark.deal slash Jarek and use promo code Jarek to get 84% off and four months free. A big thanks to all of you on Twitch that were keeping me sane while I was playing this train wreck of a game. 
If you want to come hang out in the future, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash Jarek for Gaming Dragon. If you subscribe, you can see my videos ahead of time, so try to check that out. I hope all of you have enjoyed me suffering while playing this game. The suffering is going to continue into next week, because I'm going to finally be covering Aliens Colonial Marines. Not looking forward to that, but hopefully you will, and I'll see you then.